trying to get crazy with this scene. Don't you know I'm loco? Why do you, that's the stuff we're trying to stay away from. We're trying to get away from the, the traditional music. Yeah. We're modern. We're going to play rock and roll. We're going to spend like hours trying to sound like a, a, rec, a record on the radio. Yeah. So that was pretty, pretty punk rock back then for us to, to play Mexican music. Well, then then far, fast forward to, uh, to 1983 and um, we, we put out this, this, this uh, EP. The, the record company didn't know what to do with us. He gave, he gave us like 8,000 bucks to do an EP because they wouldn't spend money on a full record. But we still won a Grammy for it. What's happening, everybody? This is Bobby Ruiz, a.k.a. Bobby Tribal. And once again, it's time for the Lower Left Podcast. I'm right here with my man, Johnny Be Good. And we're at 17th and Island, beautiful San Diego, California. Uh, Johnny. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm messing with the sound. It, it, we, you, you yeah, the, the we're, guard. we're a little, we're a little frazzled today because we've got what I would call, like, no, all bullshit aside, Chicano royalty, um, in in the building. Um, it doesn't get more, <laughs> like, I don't know, man. Like, and and I'm not, like I said, I'm not talking shit. But this is probably, I, I consider him a great friend. Uh, mentor um you know this dude's brilliant in everything that he's done um him and his band have won three grammys three grammys i think it's three grammys four grammys i'm four. sorry nominated I've, I've, whoops i've been correct <laughs> nominated for a fifth <laughs> Nom- yeah. and, uh, nominated and for a fifth the rock and roll hall of fame nominated. they were they were nominated for rock and roll MTV awards fame. yeah they they've multiple they can't even list all all the awards um and um his son so Louis Perez of Los Lobos, um, principal song, one of the principal songwriters, uh, artist, musician, painter, um, poet, author, and and the list goes on and on. And his uh, also a real good friend of mine. I've known this dude since he was a little kid. Also contributed to a bunch of tribal projects through through the years. Is his son Louis Perez Jr. So Louis. Gonna help Louis. That is a third. I'm sorry. Third, I'm junior. You third. named I'm junior. Junior. Yeah, yeah. you named me the handle that stuck for a long time. El Tercero. <laughs> <laughs> that's been like that's that's been yeah. throughout life. Yeah. There it is. So. Better than El Torcido. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, he's the he's the Tercero. So Louis um, is also you know quite talented, and he's a a whole other story, and we're gonna get to that in a separate podcast i think but what we're gonna do here is um he's gonna kind of help out questioning his pops i'll pull the, di- I'll pull the deep cuts out yeah yeah, yeah that's you, you can get on the base you. and i'll get i'll get where it hurts him yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but like i said man johnny and i we've had we've had some really cool guests but this is kind of for me it's real special just because of not just who he is, but the relationship that I've had with with Louis over the years, and hey, you can say it, we're brothers. Yeah, we're that's I would, right. I would, I would interject and Louis. say you've been very much, as Bobby has told me in privacy, that you've been very much a mentor to him exactly. as well, and, and, and you're I, very important to him, and that's where Bobby becomes more like a big brother, which is good and bad for me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I get big brother Louis by Bobby sometimes because Louis, Louis is one of those guys that that big Louis is one of those guys when he speaks, I listen yes. and I pay attention, yeah, and, and he's. He's, you know, way ahead of me and and what he's done, like traveling the world and being cultured sure. and and you know being just a badass Chicano mm-hmm. and and person and artist and and everything that he does. And then with you too as as a a little brother, you know, siblings, just, yeah, <laughs> siblings. Yeah, so so it's um it's 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 uh something I'm real excited about. What do you think, Johnny? I you know <laughs> growing up, I was I'm a baby of the 80s right so i remember mm-hmm. seeing the records there los lobos and like the my parents playing it my grandparents playing the records because that's all we had back then right like on the mainstream level as far as being chicanos and southern california and having music that was a mixture of rock plus soul and right. and yeah. you know there was nothing like it and there still isn't so it's there it's, really isn't there there's there's nothing to compare los lobos to and 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 there's a you know before we even turn on the mics, I told Louie, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions I already know the answers to, but I think it's important that people become educated on, on the greatness, the true greatness of, of Los Lobos. And, and I'm not just saying that, 
you, there's there's no question but um you know what you guys accomplished in and over the last we're approaching 50 years yeah. of, of the band being together and and we were louie and i were talking about so there's only one other band that's that's been doing it for 50 years or so and that's that's what do you say louie the, um, that's all the original members the well i was going yeah i was going on a deep dive about it and i was i what it found is that the longest uh recording original member lineup ended with uh dusty hill in zz top, ZZ top and right. then you guys <clears throat> um as far as all original members are now arguably the longest running band in american music that's all, <laughs> yeah, I, I, all I, original I've, read, I've i've read also somewhere the rolling stone magazines has called them the greatest american band yeah, depending on who the editor is. Yeah, the I've read. I, re- I read that. <laughs> yeah, that year. And how I much guess. Pain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But um, from East Los Angeles, like these dudes are straight from from East LA, and, oh, wow. and it's uh, man. I think, and then you know, going a little bit deeper, I don't. I think before you guys, I don't know what Chicano toured the world and represented. Not just Southern California, but Chicanos in other parts of the world as artists. Um, I know, you know, people may say, well, Richie Valens went Not overseas a couple of times, but his his uh, career was, you know, a lot. Ended quickly. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It, it was very, 18 very, months very, very, very was. short, and you guys are kind of been doing it for... So you guys were the true cultural pioneers of, you know, maybe Chicanismo and the sounds of of you know that came from from chicanos to the world like in i mean they're, these are heavy statements yeah well they're, absolutely they're, heavy, they're heavy, heavy, heavy but they're he- but they're heavy <laughs> statements louis but they're real they're real I, statements I, I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed i mean i'm being real quiet because i you know i i um um i don't know what to say <laughs> yeah <laughs> it, yeah it, 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 I mean, it's fabulous that 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 i'm here with you and my son and and we're the four of us are here kind of sharing this time together and and i appreciate the opportunity uh it's been a long haul yeah it certainly has you know and we've we've been fortunate to still be the same members from the very beginning the, the point that you um that my son pointed out um, off mic a little bit ago that we've been together as long as the stones but we've probably played more constantly i know we didn't take years off and and thinking about it right now, and really seriously, this is the first time I thought about it when you brought it up, that from 1973 until where we are now, what are we, 2022? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's where yeah. we're at. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, that, <laughs> that constantly going, you know, playing, working on projects and all that without nonstop since 1973. I can't remember a break that we've had. And... Um, that's when he walked in today. I was like, Louis, what are you doing home? What do you, what do you like? Yeah. And you're also w- wondering why I need to take a nap every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, from what, you know, me being the kid that had the dad that, uh, you know, and then this isn't a shot, you know, some uh, some people had the dad that came home at five. My dad came home five weeks with a suitcase. <laughs> so I think the only breaks they really got to take were for something awful and, you know, yeah. tragic. With the world shutting down or something else happening yeah, in life, right. and I can only count two times that ever happened to the the band. Yeah, so I'd say that's pretty that's a pretty long and, and stretch I, for any band, dude. And, and they're still going, and they, like they're still going. I, I we were talking about yeah. this summer and the next, you know, working towards that fifty year Crazy. global anniversary and and everything that they have coming up. It's 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 crazy, but for the the uneducated not not and i'm not saying that in a negative way no, at all no, but no. for the uneducated um listener that's not real familiar with with the history or or los lobos beyond maybe even la bamba um talk about 1973 um how you guys became a band what were your influences and and how did it how did it come together and, and where did it come together and just you know a little bit about the history of, of los lobos and the birth of Los Lobos. Yeah, well, uh, we, we all grew up in the neighborhoods in East LA. Um, um, I grew up about two blocks away from Conrad, our bass player. Uh, Caesar and, and Dave, they lived on the other side of the five freeway. 
we met in high school and we were uh, we were friends before we ever were musicians together but we were musicians i met david in uh you know i i went to parochial school i went to catholic school <clears throat> right across the street from my from my my house where i grew up uh i went to two year a year and a half of um of um catholic high school halfway through the 10th grade they thought it was probably a pretty good idea i'd go somewhere else why is that? Wouldn't have to do with anything they found in your locker, right? It had nothing to do with the 165 <laughs> joints and rubber band in my locker. Okay, it had nothing to do with that. They just thought it was yeah. a good idea for I'm me. I'm here to for a reason. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and do you want to? So you were kicked out. I was asked to leave. Yes. I was. <laughs> yeah. So, so are, nice and, I mean, it. It, it's we're right here. You're, you know, you're at a point. You're, you have adult children. So, is, is it, are you ready to share why you were kicked out? Oh, I mean, I mean, ask to leave. I, I think it's a, it's published. Is it? <laughs> you, you could you, Wikipedia's got you know. Oh, why okay, so I'm, I did, yeah, so yeah, yeah, I'm not breaking his heart. Was it really weed? I'm not breaking his heart. Was it really weed? I don't know. Yeah, about absolutely. All that. Weed, it was weed. Nice. Yeah, he's he's yeah. trying to vanilla it up, but yeah, he got caught with some weed. Nice. Yes, <laughs> it's okay. Well, I got, hey, so, I so what year? What year was that? Was seventy nineteen sixty nine seventy? Yeah, I graduated in seventy one. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do math today, Bobby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> it was no, during Woodstock, cool. the year of Woodstock, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 nice that's, one. That's right. Six, nice nine. one, Johnny. There you yeah. go. Now you yeah. met my mom at Garfield, right? <laughs> no. Well, through friend. Well, no, 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 no. Right? This is some, the story that that your mother never likes to hear. Damn, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Okay. And, 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 and she, okay, you're out there. If you listen to this, you know it's coming. Uh, I was play. I, I was asked if I would audition for this band because they had just recently lost their guitar player. Uh, he was going to go off to college or something. I don't know. Some people went to college right after high school. Yeah, yeah. I was a one. Um and um, they asked me to join the band. So I joined the band, and we were playing gigs, and uh, I met her because she was the girlfriend of the lead singer. So um, few, a couple of months after that, the original guitar player said, nah, you know, I don't like this. I want to come back and join the band. Of course, since they loved him, they decided to, to bring him back, and I left. But I took the girl with me. I'm not <laughs> Get you <laughs> <home>. <laughs> Okay, so that's it. Smooth that's up it. the letter. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want it's it, 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 now. It's it, and now. I might be canceled by saying that. I don't no, know. no, you're right. <laughs> no, 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 I, no, I, but, I but no, nothing, nothing chauvinistic about it. It's just kind of a, a shortcut. But we yeah. met uh, back then, and um, we, we fell in love. I guess you know we can do that as as teenagers. Yeah. And uh, and the rest is uh, is history. He's sitting well, right here. Yeah. History. Yeah. 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 Louis yeah. and his brothers. Yeah. Louis and yeah. brothers. I was technically yeah. in the wedding in my mom's stomach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. Nice. So so um, going back to yeah, we skipped a big chunk. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> so we, it was you and Co you Conrad and Caesar were homies first, right? No, Conrad and I were were, were friends. We were oh, okay. neighbors. Uh, right. He's was was older. He had a a, a rock band. Um, kind of modeled um, after Blue Cheer, which nobody in the audience knows who that is, but it was a band that but that their goal is to play louder than anybody else <laughs> or anything else. And uh, so he lived up the street and he was playing. A, you know, we eventually met in, in high school, and then I met David in in high school as well. And then David was a neighbor of Caesar. And Caesar was the name of this guy Frank, who was the original guy that kind of brought us together. Um, he left shortly after, um, and so and wait, I'm kind of jumping ahead there. So we're all hanging out as friends, and then we all leave high school. And since we've got four squares living at at, at home with our parents, you know, we were just hanging around as friends, but we happen to be musicians. So what's the you know obvious progression from that? Well, you know, like they say, if you hang around long enough at a barbershop, you'll eventually get a haircut. We right. started a band because mm -hmm. we were all hanging out as, as uh, musicians. But what brought us together is Mexican folkloric music. Mexican traditional music has brought us together. Why? Because we discovered it. It was played in the background. But, but what were you guys listening to like at that time besides the Mexican music in the background? Oh well, like we're, Hendrix, we're right? Teenagers growing up in America. 
what yeah. everybody was listening to. I grew up listening to Mexican music because my mom played it on the radio, mm -hmm. and she played records. By the time I got tall enough to change the the knob on the radio, I discovered rock and roll. Yeah, and I listened to rock and roll. And at that point, I tuned out Mexican music, like most kids. Yeah. It's part of the whole homogenization process of living in America. Uh -huh. You know, I tuned it out. Did the radio look like that? Maybe a little bit. <laughs> it, it looked. Uh, that's kind of modern. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> that's kind of modern. That's a little bit modern. Like, it had a big I like, that's like, thing. That's on. like sixties, I think. Yeah, yeah, but it's not Rasquache with yeah. duct tape on yeah. it, bro. Yeah. 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 Conrad listened to a radio, but I think he hit two rocks together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so then, what happened? So Mexican music was when you guys started experimenting. Well, you know, again, we're doing a little bit jumping around. Um, <laughs> I, I listened to Mexican music as uh, playing in the house. I discovered rock and roll. We all kind of discovered rock and roll. And we tuned out Mexican music and all everything about our culture. Until one day we decided to, just as a, as a chiste, uh, let's learn the mañanitas to play for one of our moms. And so we dusted off one of the records and we listened to it and we went ahead to go learn the song. And then we discovered something we didn't expect is that, man, this stuff is complicated music. And then that was it. We were bitten by the bug. As musicians, we were listening to something that we'd never heard before. At that point, there was like, how many? Five great guitar players in the whole world. Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy Page, uh, Jeff Beck, uh, uh, Eric Clapton. Here's a guy playing from Tira de los Panchos, playing Requinto, and he's blowing them all away. So this was, gee, what's going on? Our world suddenly went upside down. And that's how, how we eventually formed this band, because we just discovered this music, and it was fascinating and cool and feed them and, and their chaos. Mm -hmm. Did you have a name before Los Lobos? No, no, oh. we, we didn't have a name at all, because we were moonlighting from our other bands. Oh, okay. Connor was playing with Tierra, famous Tierra. Really? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he was. Uh, we lost the, the last of Salas brothers, um, Steve, uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, rest in peace. He was playing with Tierra. Caesar was playing in a, a, a band that he modeled after, like Tower of Power, Chicago with horns. Yeah, and yeah. Told him, you know. And then Dave and I had like a garage band where we just played like, you know, strange covers off of, of you know, weird records. And... But we're all friends. And then, it, it's, again, what brought us together was that it's this discovery of Mexican music. And what instruments were those that you guys, and how did you get those instruments? We we just made them up. <laughs> we, 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 um, was Candelas already around? Candelas was already around. Candelas was a guitar shop. Uh -huh. um, um, Candelario Delgado, who ran the place, uh, became our mentor uh, because uh, we didn't have any idea how to tune these instruments but again we jumped ahead a little bit <clears throat> we just learned on guitars but then we started buying these records and we'd never thought we'd have to be buying you know a mexican record here we were doing it what was like the first one uh it was a record by um Asito gatita mm -hmm. gatica Jacinto gatica it was a record of um of um son jarocho we had no idea but it looked cool, and but we listened to it, pattern, and it was great. That rhythm pattern changed oh, the game for you, right? Oh, yeah, it was incredible. But we didn't have the instruments. We, we, we would literally hold up a record where they show that conjunto in, in, on the cover playing their instruments. We hold it up at a pawn shop in the window go, oh, there's one. We get it like 15 <laughs> wow. bucks. Yeah. That's badass. But we didn't know how to tune them up. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So we, we discovered people like Gandelario, who showed us how to tune them. And we we just learned that well, you know. We didn't have a harp like the Veracruz harp, so we used mandolins. So we're just doing everything kind of a little rascal style, you know, just uh, whatever we can find. Just, you know, with duct tape. We were, we, were, we, we pretty much started All the four of you? All four of us. So it was the uh, Chicano hippies playing Mexican, Mexican music? That's right? exactly what was happening. That? Yeah. Exactly what yeah. was going on. So you know? Conrad had truth, too, before that, right? No. No, no. 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 So when did that happen? Didn't what? he have a Didn't he have a side band too? Conrad had another band. Con, Conrad, uh, its original band was called Euphoria. Euphoria, okay. and that was the band that was, you know, super loud. Okay. Uh, and then after that, he joined Tierra. Okay. And then uh, Caesar had Fast Company. Uh, Dave and I had a had a, a band that um, I don't know. We had a few names. Um, 
the checkers. I don't know what we were doing at that time. We were just playing. In How back, old were you guys? Parties. You guys were still right out of uh, high right school. Right out of high school. Right out of high school. And you guys were like the first cholo hippie hybrid because you guys went through like your little phase, right? Like, like that was like, like, would you say music was a healthy alternative to you guys? Because like, I remember Conrad first thing he told me once at a show goes, "Hey, this guy." Jumped your dad into our gang. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, because you used to have a little well, you know, thunderbolt I'm, on your hand. I go, what is that? And you go, a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> no, a mistake. I, I, I do remember that. that yeah, that, 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 it's good that you, that stuck in your head about, about uh, an alternative. Because when I was about 12 is when my mom bought me my first guitar because I was interested in, the mu in music. But that was her own version of doing like a youth diversion program. Mm hmm Because rather than me, I'd be out in the calle. It, we, we lived like there was a liquor store in the corner, you know, mm -hmm. where, where everybody hung out. So this was her way to kind of keep me in the in the house. And of course, you know, it, it worked. You know, I, I wanted to play music. I got this guitar, even though there was the, the strings were about an inch off of the neck and it was painful to play. I wanted it bad enough. Yeah. And I did that. Then I saw it play out later on with this kid. You know, uh, I gave him a guitar, even though I told him I'd break his hands if he ever thought about playing music. <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> that, didn't, that didn't work either. Because, you know, I, I, I know what the life is like, you know, being on the road for so much that, you know, I didn't necessarily want that for my kids. But he wanted it bad enough. And really, that's what it is. And what I tell people, if you want to be an artist of any kind, if you want to be a musician, whatever, in this case, if you want to play guitar, you're going to run into a lot of opposition. Because... Conventional thinking says you find yourself a job somewhere and and you earn a living, you get married, and you have the picket fence and the perrito running around the yard. But some of us are outside of that. It's not even outside a box, like some people say. We're just completely outside of it, the, the universe because we want, we're, we're, we want to create things out of nothing mm -hmm. in making, you know, <laughs> paintings or art. We want to make sounds that keep, weren't, didn't exist before by playing music. Mm -hmm. We want to put words together in different in different order in order to make poetry right so that's that's completely different than what anybody else wants and usually you will run into a little bit of opposition but if you stay with it and you fight it and this is what i tell kids all the time do it because you love it not because you can become a rock star because right. if you want to do it because you become a rock star you'll be disappointed if you do it because you love it it'll never let you down yeah right but i think as far as louis goes growing up around being the lobito, you know, and, and around you guys as all great musicians and the people that you toured with and that, you know, you befriended on the road and just around so much great music. It was like, but it didn't just hit Louie. It hit the Hidalgo brothers, the, oh, yeah. the David's boys. Well, yeah. hit, I'm, I'm hit, the run of the litter. They're all like the shredders. And yeah. I was more like the, the writer. And then Jason yeah. also, he, he, He's a musician, yeah, so he plays drums. Yeah, yes. musicians. So all, first. all yeah, the boys, know. all the sons have become musicians, also. Mm -hmm. And then Caesar's daughter, um, Ruby, right? Yeah, oh, Ruby. we play in a band. Yeah. yeah, you guys have a band. And she as well. she started the latest and <clears throat> yeah. picked it up. Like, and and that's I, I was going to interject something very funny. I was going to say, well, what are the odds of me not getting that normal straight job? That you told me to do. I yeah. mean, I had great role models that worked these normal jobs their whole lives. And would have never like I would have never had any other influence to do music. I mean, how crazy! I mean, you guys never had a normal job. I, I, I never, had had, no I, I never had a job in my life. I don't know if I should be proud <laughs> or, or ashamed of it. Wow! So you know, because so, I learned how to hustle real young. You know, I mean, I we collected yeah. bottles and we do to work baptisms. What does that mean? So how oh, the stuff, stuff, in stuff in our locker. locker. So how the fuck <laughs> yeah. was I ever going to have a straight job in my life? I tried to tell people this, like, like, like I had terrible role models. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was. I mean, you mentioned how I'm how born all to play the blues, man. All these, yeah. all the the children of, of Los Lobos are all musicians or artists yeah. one way or another it's true and and yeah. i guess there's no changing the the dna and of course because being a close proximity living under my roof right you know he's he, he gets you know he picks up on it if, if not genetically by osmosis yeah he's, he's he's what he is and the same with the other boys they're all you know uh, artists in one way or another you guys so the first album was made in what year and i think i have it right here The yellow one? The yellow one. 
I don't know if it's real. Maybe you can tell me if it's real or not. No, that's <laughs> original. But uh, how can you tell if it's original or if it's a repop? Oh, oh, I can tell you right yeah, now. Yeah, you look at the yeah, etching yeah. on the record. No. You're not going to look at that? This is original. Holy cow. Andale. This is original. I paid original money for it, so right now, now <laughs> okay, I don't feel so yeah, bad. Because, okay, here's a dead giveaway. Uh, nobody can see this at, at, at home. <clears throat> but at the bottom of this record, it'll say New Vista Productions, All Rights Reserved, 1978. And then it says New Vista Productions, P.O. Box, 32004, Los Angeles, California. Those, this is the people who would actually put out this record, which were just friends of ours. The ones that the next printing after this, we did it ourselves, and it's at 4041 Hamill Street, which is where I grew up. That was, where my, was, grandma, that was, was my grandma's, grandma's house. house. Really? Yeah, my uh, grandma's house. Yeah, but so, I mean, the people could boot like that, but there's always like you can look because the the vinyl, the vinyl printer. Oh, the the, the script, the the scribe. The vinyl, oh yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. the plate. We'll put something there. Yeah, it's called the scribe, and that's the one. That's what it said. Yeah. I know because I hawked a couple. I've, of I've had I've here. had this for a while. And I'm always like, I'm gonna take it to a show. I'm gonna take it to a show, but I'm, I don't don't get nobody to sign. Yeah, yeah, Fredo saved like that. That's what you guys always say. Hey, you want me to ruin your? You Speaking of ruining yeah. records, one time you invited me to. You guys were playing with Santana. You did a where you were on tour with Carlos Santana, and you were playing mm-hmm. here, and you invited me to the show. And I'm like, you know what? Chances are I'll probably get close to him. <clears throat> like I'll be able to like because I'm it's fucking Carlos, you know? Yeah. So I get my Abraxas album, original Abraxas album, put in a bag and go. And um, I get, I, long story short, I couldn't get the nerve. I I was standing next to him, got introduced yeah, to him. I yeah. could not come up with the courage to <laughs> sure. ask him to sign my record. Yeah. I, I was like, no way. And Louis, I told Louis, and Louis goes, give it to me. I'll get it signed. So I'm like, really, bro? He goes, yeah, I'll get it signed. So I gave him the album, the Abraxas album, and a silver uh paint marker. Do you remember yeah. this? Mm-hmm. I do. And it was the one of those ones you got to kind of pump and then oh. sign. <laughs> So he got it signed, but Carlos made this big old blob on the album. But it was it's cool. I should have bullshitted it. you it's, and signed it myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was a great story. I still have the record and I have the story, which is yeah. kind of cool. The story is but but yes. that's his blob though. So this it's album, blob, yeah. wh- how did this go? But so this was the first record. That was technically the second record. Which was whoa. So because I'm, the first cool. record was uh, the Si Se Puede. That that we were the house band. Do you have one of those? Yeah, I have. I have his copy of it. Yeah, wow. I took all the vinyl. Yeah. So vinyl tell, tell us about that. It's a whole re- whole album. A whole album. Yeah. But, oh shit. Oh, okay. okay. You, you don't know anything about that. Okay. So, so you thought man, you knew thought everything. Did, you dude. thought you knew everything. <laughs> How dare uh, I? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we were already a band, and we were made noise in the community. People knew who we were because who are the heck are these hippie dudes playing Mexican music? What's wrong with those guys? What's those dudes? Yeah, look so, at him. So we got <laughs> we got brought into this project that was called Si Se Puede. That uh-huh. was um, uh, a collection of um, uh, not I want to say protest songs, but it was like um, de colores, you know, things that have to do with the movimiento. Yeah. So it was a collection of movimiento songs, but maybe that's a better way of putting it. And we were asked to be the house band. We're the ones who are going to play all the music to back up all these singers on on the record. And that was put out by the United Farm Workers of America t- uh, to proceed the, the causa, wow. the cause. And that one came out. It was kind of limited production, and it, and it, and and it's still available through through um, the their website, UFW website. You could still find it, uh, a reprint of it. Yeah, but you want that OG, one. the old one, yeah, the old one. So technically, that's the first one. But but later on, uh, <laughs> our friends Luis Torres, David Sandoval, Jesus Trevino, who were, who were you know upstart. Uh, activists in the community um, came up with some dough and they said let's make a, a record a dedicated record of you and so in 1978 we went to the studio and we uh, made that first record five years is good for, for actually going to the studio recording a whole album yeah and then the under the boardwalk seven inch came out and then after that we we uh we some years later well there was 78 so so we're right up, right up against that that crucial time 1980 when like punk rock and all kinds of stuff was going on right and so uh the homemade thing was really big yeah right uh so uh we we started to uh, to go across the river to check out some of these bands and we just got the money and said, hey, you know, we can make our own record. So we made 
two records, two singles on our own that we had pressed. And I believe you have one of them or two, yeah. of, both of yeah. them maybe. So, I do have those. And, I, and, and they were independently made, and we just sold it out of the back of the Chevy. So that was like those records. So I know that you guys, during that whole punk rock scene, like that was a that was kind of a big deal. And you guys actually used to do shows with punk rock bands or open who was it that you guys would open for or play with the, these punk rock shows and what was what type of response would you get from from the audience or, or just from like that scene was that was like and then you guys obviously went into the thing where you would play a lot with the blasters and x yeah, yeah. and you know down here you, you guys would do like stuff with the bee farmers and the paladins and, and right, stuff like that right. but that was already Early eighties. That was already, yeah. It was early, but it was really was early eighties when all this stuff started happening. When we started to go across the LA River to the, you know, I, we had a friend named Eddie Zaragoza who lives down here somewhere, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and he had a car. We didn't. David and I didn't have a car. We'd go across the, the LA River and go to these punk rock shows, and it was exciting music, right? And then um, our introduction to the whole who thing. You, excuse me. Who do you remember from that era like, oh, that God. you guys would go see? Oh, you know, back then it was like Circle Jerks, Black Flag, all that, all that stuff, and uh, the Rebel Rockers because that kind of reggae thing was mixing itself up in there, you know. Yeah, and um, so that kind of stuff was going on. But I met uh, Tito La Riva mm -hmm. from the Plugs. Yep, and he, uh, he, he, we were still playing traditional Mexican music, and he called up and he said, "Hey, I'm playing a show with John Lydon's new band, Tiny Rotten." P I A L. P I L. At the uh, Olympic Auditorium, uh, one of the bands just dropped out. Do you want to do it? I said, like, well, yeah, right. For me, it seemed like, well, what an opportunity to play a big show, <laughs> you know, opening for a big rock band. And so um, uh, we went, and we went on stage. Opening uh, slot, like open, 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 all the, all the way. And, and remember, okay, let's put this into a historical context. Here is the return of the punk rock messiah who never made it to Los Angeles with the pistols because they broke up up in San Francisco. They never made it down. Oh, shit. So this yeah. is the show that they want to be at. Oh. Every punk rocker from all over Southern California was going to be there to see punk rock Jesus. Right. So we walk on stage with traditional instruments and we start playing. And I swear, Bobby, I could feel the air move. From 2,000 middle fingers going up in the air at the same time. It blew my hair back, kind of like the wow. Memorex commercial. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they got spit on. And then they started everything. throwing everything that they could get their hands on. They got a gajos, a whole bunch, throwing all kinds of stuff. And then finally, by the time we got into the second or maybe even third song, I don't even know if we made it that long. Then the serious projectiles started flying, you know, bottles and things that can actually hurt. So we ran off stage, you know. But what did we do? What most most people do with, with, with that uh, are in that kind of situation? They run home, run home to mommy. Oh man, this is awful. We were our our families came with us. They were in tears. Oh, what, what, what happened? Because it was a big show it was and like, we were, a and big we, debut. Yeah. yeah, and we were getting this <laughs> rejection. But but for us, you know, we had kind of like a shit eating grin on our face. It was it's like adrenaline. The, the adrenaline was just yeah. pumping so hard. Mm -hmm. So anybody would have thought they would have just gone back home to their quiet little barrio and forget about the whole thing. It didn't work out. No, we didn't do that. We came back. We came back. Kept coming back for more. And that's when we met the Blasters because the rockabilly cosa was happening. Yeah. And uh, and it seemed to say, okay, we're playing Mexican music and we're doing Norteño. And wow. A Norteño band is almost like a like a rock and roll band already. Bajo sesto, bass, drums, you know. Yeah. Accordion. It's the only difference. So uh, we made our way into the Hollywood and started playing the clubs out there. So by coming back for more, you mean that's when you started linking up and playing with the Blasters and X and these bands yeah. that were kind of out on on the edge of that whole L.A. punk rock scene? Yeah, yeah. It was still all mixed up because if you remember the, the, the Blasters, it wasn't like a separate thing altogether, the Rockabilly thing. It was all mixed up with everybody. 
So there, there would be uh, James Infeld and and uh, and uh, Red Devils, and there'd be Circle Jerks and Black Flag, and everybody was all mixed up and together. Los Lobos, and yeah, mixed up in there, and nobody could. So this out was, what the hell this was, was going was on. prior to in a time to dance or after? Pri- no, prior, prior, to prior. That. Oh yeah, we, we didn't get that deal with Slash Records until after all of this stuff happened. They opened for the Blasters at the Whiskey. At the whiskey we got signed, and then ironically, let me interject because you'd be too humble to say this. But what I find the best, most ironic part is not only were they shunned by the punk scene in the beginning, turned mm-hmm. to getting signed to the biggest punk label in LA, which was Slash Records, which right. was only punk bands at the time, and then giving Slash Records the biggest fucking single in the world and the history of that fucking game. <laughs> so suck it. Oh, yeah, well, no I, shit. No, I, I'll be so bold to say, yeah, we can show them. <laughs> but because the, yeah, you okay, showed no them all right. Oh, they them they all right. Didn't want, they, so, okay. the, so that was the biggest thing that Slash ever did. I mean, by far. What, what, Slash when, they, when they merged with, uh, this okay. is, we're sidebarring, okay. but when they merged, they had Faith No More and a couple other bands, L7, but I, that's it. I mean, La Bamba but that was everywhere, that was, that was Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you guys were still jump- on Slash for La Bamba. You're jumping way, way ahead. Yeah. But, well, but it's Slash good. Warner. It's good. It's good. So wait. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna. It was inter- an imprint. I'm gonna interject. Again. I'm gonna pee real quick. Okay. So Bob, I was. I was. I'm gonna I was not gonna bring the whole collection, <laughs> but I brought. I brought. There was three. There's four. There's a bunch of albums that jump out at me. Make a bunch of noise. But we had this. Uh, we had this. Um, we we're having this. This party in my pad, or this. This thing going on in my pad, yeah. like we did back in the Keep early talking. early eighties, and. Um, one of the homies pulls up outside and, you know, we're a little bit faded and we grew up listening to Tex-Mex and Norteño as the background music as well. And, um, you know, at that time there was, there was a lot of good music going on and obviously listening to Santana Malo, the Norteño music, the Tex-Mex, the rock and roll, the, you know, just whatever we were, the ska music that back then I was really into more of the ska music. And one of the homies pulls up and he's playing Los Lobos in his car and it's English and it's like, I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and I remember yeah. very clearly sticking my head inside his car going, what the fuck is that? He goes, it's Los Lobos. He's these dudes from L.A. And, you know, he went on to tell me about it and he he hit me to it. And it was. Yeah, well, this this is the one this album right here. And I, I brought this album in today. And my son, Isaac, who you guys met, he tells me, he goes, Dad. He saw the, he saw me carrying this record. He goes, that is one of two records that I remember as a really, really smart, small child. That cover is one of the ones that sticks in my head. He said, that album and License to Ill. I'm like, I'm like, that's perfect. That's me. Like, that's, that, that's me perfectly. But tell us about this record. And how how this this probably this is the re- album that changed your whole world, right? Pretty yeah, much, absolutely. No, absolutely. EP, it was. Yeah, if you don't EP have this Flash. record, that's the one you want. And if you can find an OG one, I mean, for me, Kiko was genius. Kiko is genius. All all these records, that's but our Kiko, Sergeant Peppers, right? yeah, Kiko <laughs> is and Sage. That's my daughter and my like. That's our record. Um, then there's. Uh, <laughs> Dude, How the Wolf Survived, all of them, By the Light of the Moon, all of them are just brilliant, brilliant records. And not that I, just, I, I hate to take away any time from you, but um, what I thought was brilliant, too, is what you guys did after La Bamba. Because when, when people tell me anytime I go, Los Lobos, Los Lobos, and they'd say, oh, you mean La Bamba? I'm like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I'd be like, uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's that's the that's where they got their fame. That's where they got their notoriety. But they are, they're a million times better than that. And what's super fucking cool is if you go see Los Lobos live and they're on a good one, they'll f- fuck up La Bamba. Just metal, heavy mm-hmm. guitars. They rip through it. And I don't think I've heard them play La Bamba normal. And maybe I maybe once or twice, but you guys usually when you perform it, it's it's just it's either interluded or it's distorted or it's metal or it's like, and that's kind of what's that what's that story? And then obviously what we happened? Toned, after- we toned, toned it down for the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
but but that's that's pretty cool. And then afterwards, there's a story that I've heard that the the record label's like, "You guys on a roll, do it, do it. Like you guys gotta go big and yeah. and release this rock and roll." And you're like, "No, nope, we're well, gonna that's the punkest thing. Yeah, yeah that's, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna go back and we're gonna release well, a Mexican traditional <sighs> album, which was Pistola y Corazon. Yeah, I, you know, which Bobby, they would have called career suicide. Yeah, yeah. and that well, was that was what, punk rock. That was yeah, like that, that was big, punk rock. When that you, was when fuck you think exactly. when you think about it, I think we, we're probably the OG punk rockers of East LA because when we when we turned away from playing you know rock and roll or top 40 or whatever was going on and we dropped all of those instruments to play Mexican music and and most of the people that we knew that were musicians thought we were crazy why do you, that's the stuff we're trying to stay away from we're trying to get away from the the traditional music yeah. we're modern we're going to play rock and roll we're going to spend like hours trying to sound like a, a, record, a record on the radio yeah so that was pretty, pretty punk rock back then for us to, to play mexican music well, then the- then fast fast forward to uh to 1983 and uh, we we put out this 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 uh EP, the the record company didn't know what to do with us. He gave, <laughs> gave us like eight thousand bucks to do an EP because they wouldn't spend money on a full record. But we still won a Grammy for it. Yeah, yeah. they won a Grammy on the first EP. <laughs> the first, their first yeah. EP they won a Grammy. Won a yeah. Grammy, and they were on the road. My mom received an award for him. She went on. Yeah, <laughs> really. We had wow. tickets, and we said we're not going to win mom nothing. Went on stage, and my teacher in Catholic school was like giving me shit because I was the kid with the dad that was like technically in a punk band. The kids were all mean to me, and then the teacher was a fucking asshole to me all the time. Sees my mom on tv oh, you, know, you took the record to school for for for, for, uh, for show and tell show and tell how old were you i was a little kid dude and you're, it was like east la or Mon- where were we monterey park and that was kind of like east la on the border i was going to catholic school you were going to marion marion and, and i brought catholic. it for show and tell and the teacher and a time to dance the, yeah and a time to dance the first cp i was proud it was like my dad showed you know and Two two seconds in the teacher goes do you guys want to listen to uh watch tv instead and all the kids voted to watch TV, and I went outside and tried to fight every oh, no, kid oh, yeah. that voted for TV. <laughs> yeah. she, she kicked his... He, he, he kicked I got in a fist fight with like eight kids because I, I was like, were you the one that raised your hand for TV? And they said, yeah, boom, I punched you in the face. <laughs> yeah, and right. I was like, are you the one? And then, you know, I got sent home. Yeah. But then they asked what it was, and she goes, well, you know, I thought the... What did she say? I thought the record was a little too adult. So of course Struggle. I was ostracized for having a dad. That, that was the party album, dude. Like when we would get together, the homies would get yeah. together, the family would get together. That is the soundtrack mm-hmm. of that time period. That like period, that's right. that's it. So that I guess I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. Four mm-hmm. Grammys, or four so four. so it was at a time to dance. That was uh, mm-hmm. for Anselma. We won for a new category, which is called Best Mexican American Performance. And you know, you could check the history books. I never have, but I considered us like the the the, the first band to bring the Grammy back to Los to East Los they Angeles. Were. Who else they would were. there possibly been? I don't know. Did. Uh, Trini Lopez, I don't know who else. Well, Did he I don't get know a Grammy? Else. No, Trini Lopez from East LA? No, you're right. You're yeah. right. Here yeah. you go. No, yeah. home team. I, 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 you know, yeah. I, that's how I felt. I, I was driving a, uh, uh, 1971 <coughs> Datsun uh, 510 station wagon, mm-hmm. and I put the Grammy on the on the shotgun seat, and I drove it from where we lived in Montebello or whatever, <laughs> and I drove it to East LA, kind of like the Olympic torch. Carry, <laughs> running ass. down the street. and I brought it to East LA and I took it to my mom's house and I put it on the one spot that's the most prestigious spot in all of the house that's on top of the TV set by my sister's high school uh, uh, picture yeah yeah, and I put it right there, and I brought it to East LA. I felt that? That's how I felt. All the way to East LA, you know, four blocks from Montebello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, four blocks. <laughs> yeah. That's how we see. What, yeah. what neighborhood it was it in East LA where you guys were? Where you grew up? I grew up uh, just uh, east of Boyle Heights, uh, near Belvedere Junior High School. It was called the uh, the uh, Aurora Track or something like that. But um, because back then, uh, Cesar Chavez was called Brooklyn, right? Brooklyn Avenue. I lived yeah, I lived two blocks from Brooklyn. My tia lived right off of Brooklyn yeah. between Eastern and Brannock. Uh, yeah. re- real close to another piece of history uh, to Lalo's nightclub, Lalo's Guerrero. Mm-hmm. I used to I used to cut through the parking. Whose lot. pad wow. is that on the cover of uh, Just Another Band from East LA? That's my mom's house. That's your mom's yeah. back steps. Yeah, yeah. That's so iconic. Yeah, that, that's so. You guys, man, I could like I said, I could talk to you for and we've d- had conversations for forever, but there's so many 
questions and answers and so you guys also were in and people are trip out on this like they don't know that they were had a song in colors in the movie colors the first song the first song it's one of those uh what is it called uh the the mandala effects you always go name the first song in colors they go iced tea wrong one time one night yeah so lyrically louis like and I, I, I thought about this with you coming in today. Like, people that write at your caliber, like, even poetically or your book, um, the lyrics are, it's, it's on another, it's on another level, you know? Um, one time, one night is one of those songs. Oh, yeah. And there's pictures that you guys paint with these lyrics. Um, you know, there's, there's the neighborhood. The, the song, the neighborhood, mm-hmm. like those songs are like, you know, I'm as a, as a Chicano and, you know, being around different neighborhoods and spending time in East LA as a kid myself and, and, you know, neighborhoods in San Diego and S- South Texas and, and all these other spots. Um, the pictures that you guys have painted lyrically, there's nothing to match that because what you know you're not talking about you know shooting up gang banging it's it's in the background it's mm-hmm. kind of back there it's kind of there but but the way that it's put together and the way that the pictures are painted is nothing short of genius and brilliant like if if you know f- just the feeling that you get you know or 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 the subject matter like um I think it was a neighborhood so there's there's two and correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I might be wrong. But from what I see, there's two principal songwriting teams, if you will, in Los Lobos that that write. You and David, mm-hmm. and it sounds like you guys, since the beginning, you guys were kind of closest, like, homies and yeah, we, music. We were writing songs since we were uh, in high school. And then high, high Caesar school. writes the other ones. But yeah. when I listen to an album since the beginning... And after knowing this and knowing you and, and being around the band, I, I could hear like, oh, Caesar wrote that. Mm-hmm. They're beautiful. Caesar's a great, right. great songwriter, but he definitely has his own vibe and style. And yeah. um, his his a lot of his stuff is like the the bumbia, the dance, the the you know. Right. Um, I think um, the storytelling is a different story. Is more kind of you and. You know, David, right? But yeah, I guess it's it's it, it, uh, it but it, it it all goes it, together it perfectly. Together. It, it fits, fits together perfectly. Right, right. But but it's uh you know I I I don't know. It's it's uh there's no there's nothing to compare to it. There's nothing like m- musically. I think yeah. that 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 you could or even lyrically like the pict- and who else writes this type of music or I don't know. Who inspired you guys? Who inspires your writing? Well, since I was a little kid, <clears throat> I was always interested in, in words and, and pictures and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, my dad died when I was eight years old in the kitchen while we were, my sister and I were watching cartoons in the living room. That was pretty traumatic, right? And I didn't realize it then, but art and music and, and reading... Uh, was a, a tools for survival for me, because when it comes down to it, sometimes you know conventional wisdom doesn't work. You know, I was I was very much. My mom wanted to like do as much as she can to fill in the shoes of my father. Sometimes those things don't work, and you have to f- find uh, something more ethereal, <laughs> something different, and that's where music is, and that's where books are you know and this uh painting is you know um it, it's 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 unconventional it's a different way to you can find it. i i had to find meaning for my life where nothing else made made sense and that's how i found meaning through uh through music and drawing pictures I started driving Popeye, and and I have to add light to a kind of heavy statement right there, but it was heavy. It was a traumatic experience. Yeah, but I was <laughs> there was a TV show that was called uh, um, uh, it was a Popeye cartoon show, mm-hmm. and there was a guy named Tom Hatton who was um, 
I used to draw these pictures and you draw Popeye. I learned how to draw Popeye from watching him. And I had a little pad of paper that had a, a, a just a little square, like three by three stack of paper. So I drew Popeye's head over and over and over again. And I took him to school and I handed him out to all the, all the kids. I was probably like, I don't know, maybe third grade or something like that. Nice. And I handed him out to all the kids in school. And during recess, they all crumpled him up and threw him in the Kind of like what you went through. In the playground. (laughs) And so that was my first experience with our criticism, but I got in trouble for it. But but I was doing it ever since I was, you know, a a little kid. But again, that was just a way for me to kind of cope with the, you know, tragedy in my life. And I I think, you know, I and I guess your question about lyrically, I always felt that kind of... uh, an affinity and, and, and closeness to the people that in my neighborhood, the people that I grew up with. They always had hope no matter what tragedy kind of happened to them. And I found it important for me after the success of the first record for me to write about that, write about that. But then at, at the same time, I didn't want to beat anybody over the head with a pinchy uh, right. picket sign. I wanted to make sure that you, you, Somebody lived in Kodahe, somebody lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma, could kind of hear themselves in those lyrics, mm-hmm. in those songs. So I, so I tried to do that as best I could. And Caesar kind of, it forms a perfect counterbalance to the whole thing mm-hmm. with his, his songs. Definitely. And, and all of it's hopeful, you know. You know, it, 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 you know, no matter what I write about, you know, it's not all tragic. And if everybody comes out, out you know, uh, alive, you know, at the end, you know, it's it's just I know, that's a question that I mean that's that was my inspiration. But there's me. beauty in it, dude. Um, I could hear the song in my head. Uh, forever. Oh God, I can hear the song. Forever, I, I, forever not she'd marry. I don't no, know if it's um, no. It's it's no, that was that was Playboy. It's Latin Playboys. Yeah, Latin Playboys. Yeah, Latin Playboys. That's a that's a that's a, I I can. But there's a, there's beauty in it there's there's beautiful stories dude like you listen to it and regardless it's your family uh, that, that i picture a family i picture i see you know like you know like i visualize it the the neighborhood like the mm-hmm. old man in the in the recliner and the the chick's pregnant and she's has these dreams and and, and this whole picture and, and scenario it's like a movie right. in my head um but then there's songs that you guys have done that are just like um God, I can't remember this. I'll remember it later. But um, there's there's a lot of that. There's a lot of of balance. I think what you guys have that makes the band so great is there's there's a there's a great balance, and that balance probably comes from the the songwriting teams and the material. You get there and you party, 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 dance, party, 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 and then you know there's something that comes on that's going to tell you a story. It's mm-hmm. it's just it's just that 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 whole whole vibe. So. Um, Going back a little bit, you had mentioned the five great guitarists of that era that, that you were like, oh, there's five great guitarists. Some of those guitarists, world, yeah. some of those guitarists eventually became your friends. Yeah, it's crazy. And, and they became your fans. And they it, became people that you may have yeah. jumped on stage with or they jumped on stage with you. It's, um, it's kind of crazy. It's kind yeah. of crazy, bro. Yeah, I seen man. a picture uh, yesterday of you and David playing uh, Joe Walsh's guitar that he used uh, oh, yeah. for uh, Hotel California. Yeah, that's right. Um, like, what a trip. Yeah. Like yeah. oh who who touches that guitar? Who do they let yeah. touch that guitar? Well, Louis and David could touch it, you know, or they could play it. Yeah. So I know that that you're really a humble man, but I know uh Clapton. I've heard, you know, I know you you, you did some stuff with Clapton. Mm, right. Um I've heard that there was uh George Harrison oh, was, yeah. was a yeah. fan. Um who else did American you get? Chicana. Who George so, Harrison? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, um, story time. Okay, go. okay. Yeah, go. let's hear it. I want to yeah. hear this one. Yeah. We, we were going to go. Breeze for, over we, these ones. I was like, Don't is that a band? Don't breeze <laughs> over. Don't breeze over these ones. Uh, we're, these we're, the we're, we're these in, in the deep cuts. We're we're in uh, we're playing in in Tokyo, and uh, 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 George Harrison was playing this the you know the big George Harrison show right with all all star show. <laughs> And so they took us over to uh, it was something like Budokan, huge, you know, or stadium, you know, arena type of, type of thing. So they took us there, they gave us tickets, and they gave us backstage passes. We go, okay, we didn't know, okay. And so, so we go down into the bowels of this huge 
building, and we don't know where the hell we're going. We're walking along, we're looking, and we're going down this hallway, and we long hallway, and then we then we see somebody walking across at the T of the of the of the where the two hallways meet, way down there, about a football field away, and we see a woman go by, and she stops and looks, and then uh, then we look at her from far away, and she says. Los Lobos, and she said, and he said, "Yeah." She waves, "I come," and we run up and catch up with her, and it's Olivia Harrison. Wow! And and somehow she she looked down there and says, "Hey, you know, there's another brown a bunch of brown people here." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. yeah. So it was us, and and we walk over, and she walks us back, and George Harrison is is uh, is leaning up against uh, uh, one of these concrete walls where the dressing rooms are. And she walks up and says, uh, George, this is Los Lobos. And he says, oh, Los Lobos. And he, he hangs, shakes her hand. And then he looks around the corner and he looks inside the, the, the dressing room. And Eric Clapton's playing foosball. And he's got a cigarette hanging from his, from his lip. And he says, hey, Eric, it's Los Lobos. He goes, oh, right on. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and we go like, what is going on here? I mean, that's the kind of the kind of charmed life we've we've, yeah. we've lived. I mean, it's just incredible that that Carlos Santana, all these people, um, Ruben Blades, you know, have become our, our, our well, friends. You guys, people, like I said you know? in the beginning, dude, you guys are Chicano royalty. Like I've heard, like I my, I've heard the introductions that that people have, you know, Cheech has done. People have done like everybody's like that knows anything about anything Chicano. Like that's you guys, but um, Clapton, you guys toured with him too, right? Yeah, we've done, we did shows with him. We've done shows with ZZ Top. We've done, um, we did the California tour with, uh, with um, uh, the clash for rock the cosmos. I was in New York and I just missed you and you were doing a, some kind of honors thing for somebody in New York or in Washington. Do you played the white house? Yes, we did. We yeah. were invited to play the White House. Yeah, in so, front of the White yeah, House. Yeah. George Lopez announced him saying, uh, this is the first time you see a bunch of cholos in front of the White House. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. I mean, you could Google, you could see a picture of us playing, and, and there's this huge window behind us with the the, the, the Capitol building. How about just, when Obama walked the in White House and said, my man, Los Lobos. Oh, God, oh, man, let me tell you. No one, way. I, you know, I don't want to talk you know, uh, shit on people. Well, but, I'm going to remember but, all this shit, But, but we, we, we had a VIP thing during, for this event. Gloria Stefan was there, and, and all these other people were, were, were <laughs> hanging out. And uh, they put us, everybody in the room, for the, the big introduction to the, the president, you know. Yeah. And so they put us in this room, and we walk in there. And there's all these celebrities like Jennifer Lopez and all these people. And and I didn't, no offense, but they're kind of looking down at us a little bit, mm-hmm. saying, okay, here's Los Lobos. And they're, okay. Sorry, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, these guys. guys. Yeah. All right. so, so we all get in line. They <laughs> See, line I, know the, they, I know the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> they line us up to go meet the president, yeah. photo op, the whole bit. And we're standing behind, um, um, let's see, it was Gloria Stefan. And we're all kind of, and at this point, you know, for some reason, we always feel like we're the, you know, the, yeah. the lower class in, yeah, in these the rooms. Size. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. no matter what. Bro, yeah. Right. And so we're walking up and, and, and we see somebody's up there and they shake hands and okay, you have a photo op. Then Gloria Stefan goes up and shakes hands with, with them too and okay great and she starts to walk away and we start walking up before we get halfway there <laughs> President Obama says Los Lobos my man <laughs> yeah and see? not only does he hang, shake hands with us the whole bro hug there it is yeah. and, and and these other people are standing there who thought that they were like yeah 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 algo yeah. that's right and you guys got the love they're looking at us and they're giving us these daggers like what, <laughs> what are they gonna <laughs> also when they were sound checking apparently he was listening goes oh that's him playing huh and he was like groovy yeah yeah him. yeah he kind of signed, signed but you some guys, legislature dude, the, the bluesy like you guys go all over the place with what well, though like that's what I wanted to interject in and I wanted to take a little time to recourse things that that and I'm just going to say this because it needs to be said is that although aside for better or worse that the, the Chicano cultural icons that you guys have become, that has been overshadowed by, you know, the lowrider culture, which is part of more. I'm more indoctrinated now being more a kid, like being more of a reflection of that culture and the lifestyle I'm in. But you guys were Americana personified, which is where Bobby's 
Bobby's touching on it, whether he know he probably does know it, is that you guys cross over because you don't just compartmentalize yourself as just the Chicano <laughs> struggle, but the American struggle. Nowadays, it's like, well, we have to just be rappers. Now we just have to be this. We have to just be that. Everything's so <laughs> segregated now in this world. Whether we know it or not, we're just playing our role we're supposed to go. You guys played the Tex-Mex, the country, the, the Chicano, the... the, the the conjunto, the 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 blues festivals, everything you guys did it all, and that's not done anymore because everybody's supposed to just know their role. This is what you're supposed to do. You guys didn't do that, and that's why you crossed over to guys like Neil Young and all these people. Even Bob Dylan, Bob Dylan loves them. Like this is a dude that they went on tour with Bob Dylan. Fuck, he loved them. Like the, who doesn't? He hung out with the Ramones. He hung out with the Ramones. Did you really? Yeah. Dude. Well, they, they, <laughs> dude, the funny thing is when these you people show up, dude, up. Like, these people that, would show up at shows. You know, they, yeah, they, the, they Ramones, the Ramones showed up the, at Los Lobos show. Yeah, the, these uh, people. Joy Ramone. <laughs> and he said he got up. drunk and embarrassed himself. <laughs> <laughs> no. he, he shows up and he's he, and, and, and he's in the dressing room and we go like oh, you can't mess him because he's about seven feet eight. Yeah. <laughs> Especially dudes our size. Yeah, and and he's with um, como se llama. Uh, Oh God! Germs, she's dead now. Yeah, rest in peace. Yeah. Oh, really? She's dead. Yeah, bass player. Yeah. Yeah. From the germs. I mean, I mean, and then all these other people. We play, the first time we played in London, she everybody showed up. It was a, uh, Elvis Estella was there, and he was like, "Wow, oh, okay, great." But we're we okay? We're like the accidental rock stars. Because you know we never planned any of this, and we just kind of have you know that, that feeling you just said, like you kind of you you find yourself in situations, and we're real prideful people at the same mm-hmm. time. Right. But I have found myself in this that situation, especially around institutions or, or things like that. Or mm-hmm. you 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 don't want to feel this way, but the reality is sometimes we still feel like that Chicano, that homeboy, that dude from whatever it is. Like, but then. I've also found myself in a situation where I get the most love, surprisingly. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. You know, it, but it's, 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 it, it, it's, and I, when you said that, I was like, oh man, I felt that. I, yeah, yeah, I have yeah. felt that before, yeah. but it's, it's, it's a trip, man. Like, but then again, going back to what Louis was saying, you guys started playing traditional Mexican music, opening and, and doing punk rock shows, you know, and, and you did, you've done the whole fucking spectrum. Like uh, like across the board, you know. I don't I don't know. And then yeah, I know you guys have covered. You did a a sublime song. We you, you did uh, look at Pawn all shop. the love we found. You guys Pawn covered Pawn Shop. Um, so I think the only thing because I've heard you play reggae songs. I know you guys fuck with some reggae stuff mm-hmm. and do some really right. sick reggae interpretations. And so when's the hip hop coming? <laughs> yeah. oh, man. I, think, I think the punk and the hip hop kind of ended up like like the kids ended up kind of. We were like the extension of everything the Lobos were influenced by. Yeah. But that's didn't a good point. do, you uh-huh. know, like me and Fredo and the, and all the Hidalgo bros did the villains. And yep. we were like, we were all the songs that our dads listened to. And you check to. out the early <laughs> tribal videos. I don't know. We're all in yet. that shit. Yeah. Yep. But, but again, real recognize real. Cause look at the guys like Keith from the circle jerks and all those guys. I first met them at the Lobo show when they did the, the, the folklorico record. That was wow. technical career suicide. And they were like, they all got it. They were just like, they knew that it was the punkest thing they could have done. Because punk as an ethos was doing what wasn't the norm, what was against the rules, what was artistically an expression of what you wanted to do. What was the thought process in that, Louis? Like, I mean... There's no thought process. No, but but by thing. that, I mean the, that decision, excuse me, to come off of a huge album that blew doors the soundtrack for La Bamba was like huge, huge. Um, and then coming off that and instead of jumping on that train and riding the fuck out of it to be like, nope, we're going to do this. Was that, that was a conscious move that it, you guys made it, as a band? It was like, because it, it, because again, it, 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 it wasn't, um, uh, formulaic in, in, in any way. You know, we, we just, it felt right for us to do that. Uh, and we, and we insisted on it. We we had to we had to do it this way. I, we went into the uh, office of Lenny Warnocker, the president of Warner Brothers Records, who was a big supporter of us. You know, signed us and all this. And we walked in there, and David and I walked in, and we had a, a, a cassette just back then 
of us playing traditional Mexican music. But no one had heard that. He played it. He goes, this is fantastic. Is this you? He said, yes, it is. And then he looks at us. Well, what's up? We want this to be our next record. And he looked at us like, whoa. <laughs> we just had sold you know, quadruple platinum throughout the world. And the obvious thing is to chase that that hit, like mm-hmm. most people would do, like right. you described. Yeah, yeah. And he looked at us and he says, you really want to do this, huh? I said, yeah. He says, okay, go make your record. Badass. Wow. Let, 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 so let, yeah, but he was on it too. That's badass. Oh, yeah. He, and, and he, he got he, it. He, this is what he said. He says, you go make your record. Let me figure out the rest. What he meant when he said figure out the rest, he had to get up, open the connecting door, walk into Mo Austin's office that was the the – the CEO of Warner Brothers Records and it explained to him and tell him that Los Lobos were about to commit commercial suicide. And he let us do it and we made it. And it's one of the most popular records at everywhere in the world. The, the people love that record. And we won another Grammy. Well, aside from the Grammy, let's talk about, and Bobby gets it because he's on the outside of it, is that is probably one of the most selfless things you could do because you took all the eyes in the world and force culture down everybody's throat. That's it. That's it. That's, that's, I, I got a huge flex. kick yeah, out of the flex. fact that 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 that's somewhere right. in Helsinki, somebody was listening to a wapango. Somebody in in Kyoto, Japan, was listening to a, a, a son harocho. Man, it was man, how cool! Yeah, it gets me. Yeah. I mean, how how big of a statement could it possibly be for 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 that 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 period of time when a when a band from East LA, four Chicanos had a number one record of a hundred year old plus traditional song. Yeah. On, on, I mean, that's a huge statement. Yeah, it's, especially back then, where people had to search out that record. They had to physically go to a store. They had to yeah. somehow like hear yeah. about it and then go get it. Versus yeah. now, you just you just click. Yeah, yeah. Just and more click. than half of them went. What the fuck is this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you know what he just said, and you just said a while ago, like, what the fuck is going on when you heard the Town of Dance for the first time? Yeah. That has been like our mantra for our whole <laughs> yeah, What the, like, what what the fuck are they doing it's now? It's because of the uniqueness. Dude. What are they it's doing because now? of the originality. It's because of just you guys always flipping it. And, and it kind of goes back to what Louie and I said is Kiko is like your Sergeant Pepper. Like, mm-hmm. Kiko just came out of like, what the? F- and it was nobody could figure that super one out. Super exper that did that one get a Grammy too? No, no, I no. should have. So yeah. it was experimental, and it was like I think it, the, it took over the, a year for them to figure it the, out. <laughs> it was so heavy. Yeah. It was over. Like I, I had that vinyl and Seisha was a baby, and I would carry her around the house, mm-hmm. and, you know, dancing her around to it. And it was, and then you guys did something with Elmo. You did a, a, a Elmo and the Lavender Moon. Yes, on right. Sesame Street. On Sesame Street, but. Even the colors, like the the album cover, you look at the album cover, you're like, and the music was like, and the sounds of the music is like, fuck. That's a cathartic record. For me as a kid, sometimes there was a time period where I couldn't even listen to that record because it was like lyrics and stuff that I... I mean, he writes about his life, and like, I mean, when I heard it's Elvis about our Co- life, it's yeah, when, when I heard Elvis Costello covering his song and singing "Don't Wake the Baby," and I know he was talking about me. Yeah, <laughs> it blows my mind, kind of. Yeah. It's a little heavy for me sometimes. Yeah. I can't. Sometimes I can't go down. Who that else road. has covered your songs? Oh, we had quite a few. We did. Waylon Jennings was one who did oh. the "How Will, Sur- Will Will Survive." That's the best. Which, that's ass. the best one. Yeah, but that's the best. We've, we've had we've had covers here and there, and. Uh, placements in movies. Nacho Libre with the ends with uh, Same Behind the Glass. Oh, yeah. Which the, is and, you, and that's one of the ones that you do vocals on. Yeah, I, a rare, rare yeah, vocal yeah. And, by, by and me. So, but I, I, they, they forced it down me because it, it, it is a real personal song. It's about the room that I, I grew up in in East L.A. And when I went to your pad, you had a saint. That's it. That's, that's it, one. right? The that's, that's the one. The that's it. That's the same one that okay. the, the song was, was written about. Absolutely. That was in a church that burned down, you know? Mm. Or that was in a church that closed down. Okay, so here's here's something. Okay. So uh, there's a couple couple parts to this. So touring, and you guys were youngsters. You guys weren't like, you know, and uh, I know that both you guys and you are a-A-N-A, you're just completely sober. You've been sober for a while. There's right. been so a we're lot giving of... up our anonymity. That's cool. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Sorry. That's all right. But, 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 there's a, but, 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 but there's, there's, well, can we do, we got to edit that? No. 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 
because no. some people don't like it. But I, yeah, I, I, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck, I don't give a fuck either. either because we know the contrast. Because <laughs> we know the contrast to that. We know yeah, where yes, where brother. where yes, that where yeah. So we know what's up. So, anyways, where was the trippiest? What was the trippiest show you can remember playing? And where was it? And then also, um, I know you guys have done a lot in other countries. And Mexico has been, I think, what kind of response do you get from Mexicans? Us as Chicanos slash Pochos. Just like, what you would imagine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just what you would imagine. Because it, it was a, when we first went to Mexico, it was like, it, we never toured Mexico, Mexico you know, because there, there was never a... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was hard to find venues, and it was hard to find a, a, a uh, an honest promoter. You know, I, you know, I'm giving away too much here, right? But uh, uh, historically, you know, Chicanos aren't understood in Mexico. You know, that what are you Mexican? Or are you American? Bocho is this whole thing. You know, it's gone on for a long, long time, right? And then over here in the United States, you know, we're not accepted either as Americans. So what do we do? We don't like sit down. We just go to work. You know, if we don't belong here and there, we belong to the universe. Fuck it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, um, um, what were we saying? Well, okay. trippy a show and then the response Mex in Mexico. Okay. Oh, the, uh, the response in Mexico, uh, at first was just kind of, you know, lukewarm, right? But now, Chicanos are cool in Mexico. They're, they're doing the, We're the whole cool bit. in Mexico, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's, <laughs> it, it's good. The next time we went over there, we played the Zocalo. Full. No shit. Was that when I was there? Uh, Years ago, know. when we climbed the pyramid together? I don't know if it was. Yeah, we, took, tri we took tribal to the top of the pyramid. There you, you go. Did, yeah. you no, did. that was it. That was it. Yeah. When you played, when you played the Zocalo. Yeah. It was huge. Yeah. It was huge. It's a trip in Mexico because like Iron Maiden could kill it, but then the Lobos people would be like, yeah. what? Yeah, it's just well, they, they just kind of woke so, up. So because it, do you remember like when every, every, yeah. all the rock music, the original rock music that came out of Mexico sounded like the Police. Mm -hmm. It all did. Yeah, it all sounded like the Police. And then finally, another generation grew up uh, and came with Café to Cuba and all those bands. Started Cafe, and and then yeah. there started to be this. People started to wake up to what the Chicanada was about. And it was all about mixing things up, and and uh, then then shortly after that we played the the book fair, and and, and that was a big surprise for us. We thought we could get a couple hundred people. It was four thousand people. That was in Monterey, right? That was in uh, that was in Mex Guadalajara. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the book fair. Wow. And so I don't know. We haven't been back, so we, we haven't been back there in a long time. So I don't know. So what about trippy? Like just some very well, they, memorable, like well, the first show when they threw everything except the you know, <laughs> yeah, the middle fingers. <laughs> that was like yeah, yeah. Everything, everything, everything. Yeah, but it's it's been great. I mean, we've been we've toured all over the world. Um, um, God, you know they're they're all great. But I'll tell you, you know. We played stadiums with the Grateful Dead. That was like real cool. I toured the, with the Grateful Dead for ten years. I remember my mom wanted me to quit getting out of trouble, and she made me be their guitar tech for like. Uh, I think half I remember of those. That. And yeah. then, you know, what, what you make me hang out with hippies? I was like a yeah. hippie. <laughs> yeah. I got to know <laughs> Jerry Garcia and Santana. All these kids as a kid, it was weird. Wow. wow. And so I hated it because I was going to the Misfits and shit. So it was like, oh, <laughs> oh but wait a second. Oh, One day people. I came home and, and I walked in the house and I hear the doors playing somewhere. And I go like, where the heck is that come from? I go all the way up to the back and it's coming out of his room. And he's listening to the doors. It was all the acid I accidentally did. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's a whole other podcast. <laughs> <The mushrooms. Okay. laughs> not your fault. I, you told me not to eat anything no, it is off my that fault. table. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, there's some other stories. The, 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 the thing ah, with the Grateful Dead, weird. because <laughs> we got kind of anointed by by Jerry Garcia. He actually walked on stage at uh, Royal Seco and mm -hmm. and and introduced us. And at that point, it was like, oh, Jerry says we we should like him. And all of a sudden, we became yeah. So you have we, Deadhead fans. Yeah, and then when Jerry died, they had nowhere else to go. They went to our show. All of a sudden, all this tie showed up. Wow, and Caesar wears tie dye sometimes. Yeah, they all do. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it just it just was. I don't know. This is a crazy mixed up uh, kind of life. You know, yeah. not not your typical linear career. It's been just like I like everywhere. that you guys stayed the same, bro. Like you 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 wearing Vans, like and you guys wear Vans and you guys wear Chucks and you wear like the, the homeboy boots and Levi's and Pendletons and Tribal, and 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 you guys are. 
regular dudes like it's summertime and even even conrad's out there and like shorts and in vans and yeah. you guys you guys are real down to earth solid just as real as they come you know like it's it's badass so um what do you and this we could edit this out if it doesn't come out right but there's there's a uh, what do you think of the word hispanic the word I mean, we're, I, I'm, I'm Chicano. You're getting like, political. I'm Chicano. A little bit. I'll yeah, kick it up. Bit. Uh, uh, he doesn't uh, have to go sign that. I'll what, kick what, it up. What, okay, Bobby, I'll throw it back okay. at you. What do you think of Latinx? Ooh, you're really going okay. there. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't. Right, right now, it's like I, I can't speak on it because I don't know enough about it. Um, but uh, for me, it's like the whole struggle of, of being a Chicano and mm. feeling Chicano mm. and, and you know being an educated Chicano. But I'm not as educated on Latinx where I can speak on it clearly and and with confidence. Um, That's okay. But, there was but, a statistic that only three percent <laughs> prefer Latinx. You know, so thirty percent pers- right, prefer Hispanic. Right, right. So well, Hispanic, maybe the ma- it, minority is being yeah. the majority right now. Well, right. I don't know about Hispanic right. either because I think with the the problem with with the Hispanic, um, it's just a blanket term for all Latinos. Right. I mean, there's, there, there's there's Puerto Ricanos, there's Cubanos, there's Mexicanos, there's, and 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 that's that's a disservice, right? And in a way, that could actually pit us against each other because because right. sure. you're struggle because you're this blanket term and you're struggling to stake put the stake in the ground that th- no we're Cubanos. Right. And, and and that could cause friction, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm not crazy about that too. I agree right. with you. Yeah. I think labeling everything, everything and trying to find an individual label for everything is dividing everything more right. personally. Right. Why should you anyway? Right. You know, right. I mean, thanks I, for the answer. I like that. Yeah. So yeah. It's a that was cool because us. I I understand what you're saying too. And and you know, they did it to everybody. They did your Asian and what would you what is you know yeah. everybody everybody's classified and you know the different uh, sort sorts of blacks the different sorts of latinos hispanics if you will but um you know to to maintain your own identity as a mexican-american as a chicano so that's 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 just something important and and, uh i just occasionally i ask that question just because i like the answers and and i respect everybody's answer and and, and i i think latinx (laughs) itself started was adopted in the in the college system with one professor in particular that then a couple latin professors then co-signed on the original person was white who adopted it from latinx was which was considered in the punk scene for trans latins Mm -hmm. and then it got indoctrinated into the college system and then a couple chicanos ran with it but it was not invented by chicanos Mm -hmm. that's why or or latins and and i feel for that reason some people some people some latin americans find it as a disservice is dividing us more and making us fight with each other i think someone i need to i need to get honestly i need to educate myself to that term and 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 maybe you can hit me to it or you guys can can teach me about it but i'm pretty i'm gonna be honest i'm pretty ignorant to it um because i I think it's 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 an uh, it's so that it is not Latino or Latina, it's, it's non gender okay. specific. Yeah. You know, which is. But how does that cool. work in the language of Spanish? But does it? how does that work? <laughs> how does that work as maintaining? Because uh, it's the same thing. You're a Chicano or you're Chicana. So this is kind of <clears throat> your, your. It's a gender fluid way of saying it, but if you say it in Spanish, you will hear that then. then. Latin- Change the Spanish language? Latinx. Latinx. That sounds better Those than Latinx. <laughs> I like the way that's the intent's cool, but I don't know. I I, I don't feel like it it does uh, Latin Americans a service personally. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I I think you know if that person wants to be called that, then that's cool. And then move on. Like, like, yeah. like, yeah. like yeah. I'm cool. With you know, yeah. and, God bless you. Right. I'm not but to right. force right. people to call yeah. you something, yeah. Like, yeah. That's yeah. Not that's cool. cool. Yeah. They, they, they called me Screwy cool, Louie in exactly. high school. So. <laughs> He's <laughs> like it. No, I'm fine with that. I think people should just be allowed to be whatever they want, and and you can have the freedom to do whatever you want, but don't force anyone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Louie, um. Where's your writing going now? Like, what are you writing about? What are you feeling? What do you, what do you, where is your, because uh, we've gone through a real yeah. heavy last two years. Right. Um, or last, let's call it last five years politically. Um, and then with, you know, COVID, um, culturally, there's things are moving so fast. Like, just, just the world's in a weird place. Um, California, Southern California, our, our home is, is really, trippy right now there's a lot of you know people leaving there's a lot of um you know money grabs and politics and how is 
where's your i'm i'm cu- very curious to see where your head is right now and where your writing is is going well um i had you know year and a half off you know mm-hmm. we we never had uh, that kind of ta- time off in 35 years mm-hmm. and uh, i kind of liked being at home my fear was that i would come out of um out of the the lockdown with nothing to show for it because uh um, hey, here's an opportunity to, to start the, at least a couple of chapters of the great American novel or paint a bunch of pictures, write a bunch of songs. Well, guess what? That nightmare came true. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you guys cooked a lot. Oh, man, did I Yeah, cook? I no, followed you, the, the IG. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, you would post like the, what they would cook. and that was, Yeah, that was well, beautiful. I was, I I was just it. doing this thing that I was calling the, the so qu- I, quarantine kitchen. That's what it was. Quarantine kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I was trying to encourage people to stay the fuck at home, yeah, okay? Yeah. yeah. And I'd cook up with these stuff. And it wasn't necessarily Mexican. It was anything I, you know, Whatever. because I'm vegan. Yeah, you know, okay, yeah. I've been, I'm one of the originals. Yeah, you know, I know. For, for over, you know, 32, 33 years. Yeah. So uh, I was cooking up the stuff, and I was just trying to encourage people because every post ended with uh, describing what it was, and I said, "No, stay the fuck at home." I showed something at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, because you know we're trying to do our part, and then we started doing some uh, at home recordings for everybody, and uh, you know the live streams that was that was kind of becoming the thing for a while, mm-hmm. and we finally came out of. We were kind of the last to do it, and we were kind of nervous about how people were going to take that. So it's, why are they taking so long to kind of give us relief? Well, you know, because we were kind of convalescing. You know, when 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 that whole thing happened, I didn't hear from anybody for like two months. Nobody, not even how are you doing or nothing. But I understood. I didn't get butthurt about it because, you know, we had spent so much time so close to each other that we just needed to get away from each other. And and it, it, there's something, some truth into in what they say about you got to get away for some, from something to be able to fall in love with it again. And we're back now, and things are going good. As far as the writing goes, I've, I've wrote, I've read like, I wrote one song since, and that was uh, um, "Native Son," which is for yeah. the title track of our the the new record, album, yeah. which is a kind of a, a, a story about uh, about LA. You know, that was it. But um, I'm anxious to get back to working on a new project. You know, well, we, you know, I'm ready to start writing again. I haven't, I haven't really done much of it. I, you know, I. I um, I just been kind of digging being at home, but you, now we're back on painted? the road again. Did you paint anything? Yeah, I did during that. During that, I did a lot of small things. So you know, just working in the house and in in, um, in my in my small bedroom office. Mm. But I did I did drawings. I, I started making these old sculptures out of uh, pieces of of, of of wood and stuff I found because I had just moved mm. just before the pandemic hit. I just moved, so we had all this construction junk laying out around. I started making these little sculptures and and doing some painting and. And uh, that's it, but uh, nothing, uh, uh, nothing. You're a blessed man, Louis. I, man, you know, I swear, I'm, I'm, I'm like the luckiest guy in the world. I have a little, I have to admit, mm-hmm. um, because I'm, I'm so, uh, I've always um, celebrated where I came from. Mm-hmm. All my songs are about, about about my my people you know and I, I discovered that when I collected all this stuff to get all, all these songs together that I realized you know this is not about me this is about us you know and um, um, remind me the question again and we can cut here <laughs> <laughs> I, I just lost it well, the Lobos record uh, promoting for him Native Son on New West Records <laughs> which is all, also up for a Grammy yeah, oh, no, wow. yeah. We just, you were talking about your writing and, and is it? yeah, yeah. yeah. oh yeah, no another yeah. Grammy they're up for another yeah, Grammy yeah. by the way yeah. Wow. Yeah. But I, you know, I kept I kept busy doing things during during the lockdown, and we're back again, and we're we're, we're making music again, and I'm looking forward to, to writing some more. So here we go. On this is we'll we'll, we'll start to close it out of the 50 year program. What's that look like? Like it, well, and, and and being that you know, I don't think you guys are ever gonna retire or you'll ever stop. You may say, "Oh, we're retired," but then they're gonna. Pull you back in somewhere to do shows here and there and here and like there. Like Black Sabbath, yeah. ten, 10 reunion tours, yeah, or, or Circle Jerks. Yeah, oh, I know. Yeah. I yeah. Talk, they well, played we'll San talk, Diego yeah. the other night. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Keith is back out there doing. Yeah. It. So, so listen to see punk rock. Right. Punk, punk rock came back in Louis real quick. Yeah. Should take him to see him. Yeah, we can, we can arrange that. Oh man, I remember Keith Morris. Uh, where the uh, Slash Records had a uh, record release party at their offices on Melrose. And uh, I remember Keith Morris was there, and a bunch of other people were hanging out, blasters, but a bunch of 
people hanging out. And there was this big, like, trash barrel, you know, whatever they are, what a 50, 50 gallon or whatever, they, yeah. you know, a regular trash can, <laughs> full of ice, and all the beer was in there. And there was no beer, like, flowing at the top or nothing like this. And Keith was said, I need a beer. And he looked, and I said, beer isn't there, but I don't know. And before I was able to finish my sentence, he dove in. <laughs> He dove in. So all the shoulders are like two patas sticking out like this. And I go, holy crap. And 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 I could see the sub switch. And I grabbed him by his legs and I pull him out and he came back down with two beers in his hand. <laughs> but yeah, th- th- those guys are great. Yeah, I mean, that was a man. great period for us. You know, the the punk rock scene, it was all about about like brotherhood and sisterhood and camaraderie and yeah. and uh it, it, it was just one of the most the best moments I've in my whole my whole life was th- that scene. You've had a lot of badass scenes, bro. It, it, it's you know I'm really grateful again. You know, like, and I remember what we were saying. You know, um, I've always celebrated all, all you know everything that's been about my neighborhood and where mm-hmm. I'm from, and and that that's that's what I'll I'll I'll, I'll always do. You mm-hmm. know, so uh, if I ever do start work, go back to work again, I, you know, I think I'll just pick up where I left off. I guess. So the fifty-year plan—that's what we were at. Year, that's it. Is. Yeah, that's, you could cut all that. Was just no, flow. I just let you go because I want to hear it. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, story comes just keep, out. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. The, I, I was literally just just uh, <laughs> rambling because I'm trying to remember. What we were I, talking I, about. I like so, it. Okay, the fifty years. That's, that's, that's oh, why dude. we're yeah. We yeah. love them for that. Podcast yeah. is just, just a conversation. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah have one. Have one. Um, the we're however this uh, the show's time stamped. Um, we're. Right now, we're 20 months away from our 50th anniversary. So uh, we got a lot of ideas, but uh, geez, we're running out of time. Yeah. Right. So, uh, but documentary that that's in the works. Um, probably be in, you know, they'll probably take it to festivals, whatever. But you know, get on Netflix as soon as possible or something like that. And then a it's tour. already being shot. It's going to start up. <laughs> it's with the suits right now. You know how long that takes. Yeah. So uh, uh, documentary film. I'm thinking uh, a um, some sort of box set kind of thing. Does that even exist, Bobby? Anymore physical um, stuff that people can collect? I Not think, really. I, I, I don't. I, honestly, that's yeah. a very good question. Yeah. But I think people are buying records. I mean, buying, yeah. buying vinyl still. I, I think so. Um, I, CDs and stuff. But yeah. you've gone through the whole. I mean, I don't think oh, you guys God. did eight tracks, did you? No. no. <laughs> so <laughs> you guys came vinyl. on we, your we vinyls, played. vinyl, cassettes. I have all the Los Lobos Cassette. vinyl. I have Los Lobos cassettes. CDs. CDs. You remember the CD long box? Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever figure yeah. out what that was about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I have it. Um, the ones with the, 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 there's CD containers that are kind of glued inside it. Yeah. 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 yeah um, but, but commemorative stuff. And then is there, I, I would like to put together because we have a lot of archival material. I could see, uh, a, um, an audio and whatever form it is, collection of like, archi- Caesar was always a, always a gadget guy. He had a reel to reel way back there, so he recorded us all through the, the wow. early years. And there's a lot of outtakes, a lot of other stuff that we can use. Oh. I would like to see like a a tour and exhibit of memorabilia and, and ephemera, there you go. like yeah. the original lyrics and uh, and all this. Stuff. There's a couple of them at, 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 that are happening, but it doesn't have anything of 20th anniversary, uh, the 50th anniversary. Yeah. But um, some a tour. We, we're thinking about doing a tour with the symphony orchestra. Oh yeah. So we can pull in the community <laughs> orchestras and we can send out all the scores to all the cities and then have a community outreach by inviting like the. The local symphony and and uh, yeah, there's a lot of ideas. It's just you know, the don't give them all it. up. But I think I think I think you're in a you're in a space that is no one else has ever been in. Maybe no no one no one has been in in the position that you guys are in with the 50 year, you know, as a yeah. original member band, still mm-hmm. touring, still making music, still going in the studio, still supporting the albums, still doing the whole. The whole, you know, thing. Yeah, um, I, I don't. Re- I really don't know what, what what should we do for fifty years. There's all these ideas. I don't know if there's anything. In well, so the record labels are in that same boat with you, because who who we, you we, know the Stones. Yeah. The Stones, I guess, like you said, have 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 done it. Um, how far did ZZ Top go? I don't know how many years they were at, but they were the longest <laughs> running. Mm-hmm. Now, now they're you know, I mean, they're going to keep going, but not as original members, obviously. 
I guess it was. So, so, and, so with, and that's, that's I'm sure, um, without giving anything up, and I'm not, you know, I'm, not that I could give anything up, but you guys don't give anything up, but even maintaining those friendships and that arrangement with four dudes for 50 years and you guys are touring and on buses and it's on planes and it's right? i mean i've been on tours with guys you know to different parts of the world little short you know see them again a two week <laughs> yeah. four days three days and then that uh, yeah sometimes it's like oh man i'm glad i got away that dude wouldn't or this <laughs> this or that or man that dude wouldn't shut up yeah, or, yeah. or you know whatever it is like that's that's like being married to four People. The same people. Because yeah. you think of these bands that keep going, you forget, oh, yeah, they did change yeah. bass players. Oh, yeah, they did change drummers. You forget yeah. that they're not all the original members. Yeah. Right. So to have like those four those four relationships in it and it's really cool because when you still see a local show you could see that they're looking at each other a lot of times they're having fun and mm -hmm. you know they're nodding the head and they're laughing or they're you know there's 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 that camaraderie that's yeah. still there you don't see the chingasa backstage no <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know Bobby, I, I, you know i have a theory okay uh -huh. and and i and I, I i'm i'm not a psychologist even though i play one on a sitcom uh we became we were friends before we were a band together yeah we recognized each other as brothers before we ever formed this group and that goes deep it's not not any one of these members was ever called in uh from a classified ad we didn't audition for 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 a bass player you know we just all grew up as friends together and the band was just and to, even to this day the band is kind of incidental you know it's more about us being you know, four brothers. Yeah. You know, all our families know each other. He, what do you call Dave, uh, Big Dave? What Uncle do you call Dave? Dave? Uncle, Uncle Dave. Dave. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm little David Dave. was like my brother before yeah. my brother. There's a nine year age gap before Drew, yeah. me and my brothers. I, I still they like. They all consider I mean, each other David cousins. were like yeah. my brother. Yeah. Cousins, brothers. He's like my little brother. Uncles. That's how we are. You know, so yeah. how could it not be about family? It's so that's why I say it's almost like the music is you know second. Well, and it, David and Vin, David was is your godson, so he was my yeah. godbrother. Yeah. So we were all kind of godbrother. I never heard that one. Well, no, that's what you call him because we called each other cousins. You know, because you didn't ever say godbrother. Yeah. Yeah, sounds cool though. I like it. No, <laughs> yeah, right, right. So we're all incestuously start related. A band. Let's start a band. <laughs> sounds cool. I think we'll we write did. a song about it. We did start a band. <laughs> start a band. <laughs> we started a band. Everyone forgot they did. about. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the villains. The villains. Most villains. No, nobody Most forgot villains. about those villains. That's it, it, that was I history. heard currently there's a Wikipedia being written about them. Right now, that's so. it. That's history. And, and that's we're gonna get history. to Louis's podcast, but we're gonna close it. I think we're gonna close this one out. Okay, man. I, like I said, it, it's been an honor, a pleasure, a, a pleasure. And it's been the conversation and everything. Like, we could do this, you know, again. It's but, just great to be here with all of you. It's yeah, man. Thank we you. Do a part two with him. Yeah. Too. yeah. Oh, we could, anytime. Please. Just get, we should in. get deeper yeah. in. Yeah. Cause I, I know, um, there's a lot more. Yeah. There's a lot, lot more talk to yeah. talk about. And I know some of the stories that he's told me that. I got to be like, hey, do you want to tell that story? Or yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I go into trouble while they're not giving a fuck. Like, let's see, let's yeah, see, yeah, yeah. fucking, let's see. Yeah. give me that scared look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just bring what, it up. Yeah, no. what do you, what do you, no, yeah, <laughs> right, no, right. I'm, I'm all about true confessions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I spill the beans. You, you can, there. you can, you know. Well, after, yeah. after, we had a cool somewhere. conversation on the way down here in closing, and I think this will help you too. Is he was talking about like mortality and how much, yeah, you, in his life, like, like I was saying, do we should save this because this is good and that's why like you know he's at a point in his life where he's done all this stuff and now he's like well what's what's ahead and i, and I was you know being young younger mm -hmm. i'm not yeah. young anymore you pointed out all the gray in my hair just a little is um like dude like it's now it's the moment you gotta be present yeah, yeah. like you gotta just enjoy all sure. like every minute like look yeah. at what you've accomplished and yeah be stoked on it and i'm proud of you i mean i can't say that we're I all, could ever. We're, all, we're all proud of you like yeah. anybody that's well, doing sure. anything like you guys but, are... it, but it's tough bobby you know it's, <laughs> it's it's um you know you're staring down the rest of your life and and it's then you can if you think about how many uh, you know that there's a lot more um christmas is behind me than in front of me and but you know even if it, it I'm proud of everything I've done. I mean, yeah. I, I got, I'm way overpaid. Uh, life has given me so much great things and I've been able to do so much. 
and be able to reach it out to a lot of people. But when it comes down to just me sitting in a room thinking about like, wow, I'm 69, you know, uh, it's a little, it's a little daunting, you know, yeah. you, you know, but, but, uh, you just got to make it all count. You know, you got to be there every minute. Like, like we were talking about on the way over here. I, I don't think you're ever going to stop, Louis. I, I think you'll, you'll, you're going to write as, as I will. Yeah, yeah. You're going to continue to write and, and, and do these projects and the, the legacy is, insane yeah. like touring it's, it's is ridiculous. hard though man i'm telling you, you we were t- i was laughing about <laughs> yeah. it with you earlier yeah. because it, it, it dawned on me a friend of mine told me that i said man you know i got i got like two years off and uh now i'm back and i could do it in my sleep but but it man it hurts it's the like i'm out of well. shape or something mm. and then you said louis you're two years older now yeah and that's true I've been away from it two years, and now now I'm realizing that yeah, and how hard it is. You know, people don't realize how much at at your age, um, how how much effort it takes to actually stand on stage and play guitar for for an hour and a half and and sing and and hold a guitar and stand there just to stand stand still for an hour and a half or move around without playing music. Like it's it's an effort, and when you're at 69 years old, it's yeah. And then being getting off stage and getting on the in the van or on the bus or in the plane or on the train and sure. and getting up early and hey, you know what? We're we we be in bed by midnight. We got to get up at six to catch the to get in the van to go to the the airport and wait through customs and get on a plane and you know the whole touring thing. It's it's you're right. It, it's it's hard. Yeah. And then having to get on stage and try to feel 100 percent and give 100 percent because that's what Everybody's it expecting. gets tougher every night for me to do the backflip off the off the, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the drum the stage dive. <laughs> yeah. It's getting tougher all Is the it? time. Yeah. Who's who's uh, drumming now? Alfredo. Fredo. Ortiz. Fredo. Alfredo oh, sorry. Ortiz, oh man, he's not gonna like that. Fredo, you know I love you, bro. Yeah. Fredo's a shit. Fredo, if anybody doesn't know, Fredo's an amazing. He started with the villains, Los Villains, right? And then uh, he went. He did stuff. He was one of the founders of Ozo Motley, right? Wasn't he? He was. He was he, I mean, if Ozo you Motley. go into his whole lexicon, mm-hmm. he start. We started a talent show together. Yeah, and then he he got a little. <laughs> he he was also in Yes Guy, and then. He kind of like was hanging with those Motley guys and was on the ground floor yeah. of that. He just bounced around. It was funny during the pandemic, you know. Unfortunately, the their the drummer that was drumming for them had to go back to Mexico, and and I did, I kind of mentioned it to my dad. I said, you know, right? was kind of just hanging out, dude. Yeah, you yeah. should probably hit him up. He's like, yeah. I go, I mean, and I, to me, it just sounded. I mean, that's yeah. family. Fredo's, dude. Fredo's a badass percussionist, the and then best. and then he went to the Beastie Boys. Beastie I mean, Boys, that's too. a whole right. other story. Right. That's he all. went. He he was when after we in high school. After Bobo, he went. He was Willie Bobo left, and I remember in. I mean, that Eric, whole story. Eric Bobo left. Eric Bobo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric Bobo. That 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 story is insane because Fredo was playing with this this ska band. I'm gonna do this real court. I'm gonna no, I'm gonna cool, smut it's cool, it's cool. you up real fast, Fredo. <laughs> is that we? He was playing in the ska band. He was playing in the punk band, and then we had a show at some weird place in Hollywood. And Fredo had canceled, called and canceled it for the ska show. It didn't tell me. And then I rebooked it, and we went down there and played. And just so turned out, Money Mark showed up to see. The band before us, uh-huh. the the villains, and he met Money Mark, and they started hanging out, and sure enough, joined the band. That was badass. Yeah, that was that. that I was mean, in high school. Yeah, I at one time, um, real quick, I was in Japan. I was at Tokyo Hands. I was with Isaac. Yeah. Oh, I love and, Tokyo and, Hands. And Isn't we're, it great? We're, yeah, we love that store. Jeez. I was telling Sabrina last night, like, like Tokyo eight Hands, like, of yeah, different great stuff. in Shibuya. Yeah. yeah. And we're looking at markers or something, and I hear somebody yell, "Hey, no Mexicans!" I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what? Him, like, dude. who's what? Oh, who's that? And then I didn't know what or who. And then I look, and it's fucking Fredo. Cyclone. Yeah, I love him. Yeah, he was there with Ad Rock, just yeah. cruising around around Shibuya. And I'm I like, got to tour with them like a little bit, like in the ground floor. Of that it was so that was surreal. That's a whole other. We'll get into that later. Anyways, Louis, yeah. man, dude, it's it's like I said, it's been an honor, and thank you so much for coming down. Thanks um, for the you know, invitation. Yeah, no, sure. dude, we gotta it, close it, a gap a little yeah, bit. Dude. Yeah, it just you know? say when, dude. I'm, I, yeah. I always love spending time with you and yeah. and Same soaking here. up some of that that wisdom. Um, I get a lot from you too, Bobby. Yeah. You, you've, you've got a big heart and a good. Soul. I appreciate that, and um, 
thanks Louis for making it happen. For moderating, you know, we're, we're, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, moderating, Johnny, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. So Johnny right yeah. thanks, Johnny. Johnny, be good. I, I was a little honestly. I told Johnny, I go, hey man, I might if I freeze up on this one, I might need some because I, I was, I was, I told him, yeah. I said, hey dude, I might. I like, guess I'm telling you, dude, I've known you for fucking years, yeah, and I was still like, wow, this is the baddest, most like nervous podcast i'm going into oh, it's no. fucking yeah. well ground you know, floor let's put this out there too you know i mean we i mean you're like a you're a tastemaker you're you're um you know you're great like uh you put together amazing art and and you've got a name for yourself and we knew you kind of on the ground floor of that yeah, for sure i was yeah. a kid, 100 just barely going to school and yep. doing stuff and then we were like so watching our lives take these trajectories and and you know there's people who still go how do you know Bobby Tribal? And I go, how do you know? Him? Like, <laughs> they, I've known him do since. they know who you are? Yeah, you know, I don't. I, don't, I know I'm you don't do there. that. You I'm don't not do out that. there being yeah. the dude who knows who I am. Yeah. And not that you are, but yeah. you've no, I, you yeah. you curated such a lexicon of art that you 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 deserve that. I'm more of the guy like like you find out I'm an onion. You peel out and you go, wait a minute, who <laughs> did that? You know? Yeah, we're gonna get to the onion. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. sorry. We're gonna, but, no, I'm you're gonna right, give though. you your roses right now. I appreciate. Now, I appreciate that, Louis. I love you guys, man. Love me too. And um, yeah. thank me you, too, so, thank you so much. And Louis, man, shh. you know it's been an honor. Um, Johnny, be good. Thank you, Johnny. Louis Johnny, Perez, you. el tercero. Tercero. <laughs> Louis Perez. Not torcido. Los Lobos. Yeah. Lower Left Podcast. Tribal Click. Seventeenth and Island, San Diego, California. Man, that was one for the books. Rifa. That's right. Gonzalo's. We're out. Peace.